You know, 91 weeks ago when I was just browsing the internet looking for inspiration for my own weight loss journey, um, as I was 309 pounds, I was looking for somebody to inspire me, to show me the realistic expectations, you know, something that showed the real story of what I was in for. And sadly, I wasn't really able to find that in all the social media platforms I was looking at. You know, granted, I probably could have searched different words or maybe spent a little bit longer, but I did search for quite a bit of time and I didn't find something that resonated with me. So, 91 weeks ago, I created this YouTube channel. I created this YouTube channel to show that there's a lot of unrealistic expectations <laughs> um, in other videos showing dramatic weight loss results. And that sets the tone that's not really accurate, in my opinion. So it that's again, that's why I made this channel. Now, this is the story of a real weight loss journey. What's up guys? I'm Jess. I, it's been three weeks since I've actually made a real YouTube video. Not something I sat in my car and just get a, gave a quick update. So I have literally been on a three week break from all social media platforms. It's been glorious, but a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stuff to talk about today. So buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> so, okay. So week 91 of my keto transformation. This is not going to be a video that you're, this is not going to be a pretty video. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I have been dreading having to confess all of this info that I'm about to tell you. Um, it gave me so much anxiety, just even the thought of having to say this. I was one pound away from my goal weight before this all started. <laughs> so let's just put that as a preface of what I'm about to share. So what happened? Okay, so my husband and I are big fans of doing DIY home renovations. So we had bought wood for this house we currently live in when we moved in four years ago. Um, however, we had two little kids, like really little kids when we moved in here. And um, that just put the renovation projects that we normally would be able to pump out kind of like on pause. So randomly, you know, it's right before the holidays, Kyle's like, let's get that wood done. Let's put the wood floors in the house. So we currently had tile all on the first floor of our house, except for the bedrooms, which were carpeted when we moved in. So we replaced those, those you know, the carpet, which was real easy with the wood. And then all we had left was the tile to demo. And if you have ever, seen the process of removing tile, like 1,200 square feet of tile. <laughs> wow, that's all I'm gonna say. That was an enormous task. So the past three weeks, being that the holidays were coming up, I wanted my house to be pretty by Christmas and Thanksgiving. We have family members coming in from out of town. So it put a three week timeline to get this project done. So thankfully, <laughs> Three weeks later, here we are. We are just installing trim at this point. Um, there's a few extra things that we're gonna do that are just little minor details, but the main flooring uh, charade is done and it looks so beautiful. It was rewarding work, it was hard work, we saved a lot of money, we got a lot of sweat equity, basically. So um, here's the before and here's the after. So with that being said, there's an enormous amount of dust that comes from a construction renovation demo project. So even though the whole house was taped off and, and blocked and sealed as best as we could, it still got everywhere. And literally for the past three weeks, I have been walking around my house with a bucket and a Norwex uh, microfiber cloth and just wiping everything, wiping everything. So there was an enormous amount of dust that comes from in a renovation, demolition type project. So much dust. So literally every surface in this house had to get cleaned. And that went from linens to bed, bed linens to, you know, towels to curtains to everything in addition to all the hard surfaces. So there was an enormous amount of cleaning. And not to mention actually installing the wood floor, the trim, the moldings, it could go, I could go on forever. So in all of hindsight, 
a lot of work, but totally worth it, and especially how beautiful the house turned out. That also meant that my exercise routine went pew. My ability to cook really went away too because my kitchen was taped off and closed off and like we really didn't, we tried to keep the mess down and it still, <laughs> it was a wasted effort. But I mean, we tried, but the kitchen was closed off, you know, and it was easier to just get fast food, take out, whatever you want to call it, eat out. Um, so that turned into something that, we'll get to that in a minute. The next thing is, um, health wasn't my priority for the past three weeks. Health has been my priority for the past 90 weeks. 91 weeks was my, or uh, minus three. <laughs> so 88 weeks, my health has been my priority. This past three weeks, my health was on the back burner. And I have proven by getting to 309 pounds that when I don't make my health a priority, that's a problem. So the next thing is, I thought like eating, referring to all the eating out, um, takeout, all that kind of thing. Yeah, it seemed like, you know, even if you're ordering keto stuff, the portion sizes, the additives, it's not clean, you know, that whole thing. Well, eating that for like the past three weeks, each week, the sugar cravings come back. The, it, it was just something that it's, it's triggered. I don't want to, I don't want to say triggered, but it triggered me. And I thought I could control it. After the first week, I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, I thought I could control it, but it got out of hand by week three. I literally went back to all my old habits, eating whatever I wanted, not caring, not exercising, no routine, and living it up. So I lived it up for the past three weeks. It happened. I messed up. And today I'm here confessing that. And it's like I said, I don't want, I didn't want to make this video. I didn't want to disappoint you and let you down. But at the same time, the whole point of this channel is to show you realistic expectations of a keto journey. What you see in, on the internet is so fake, not to mention how many people have stolen my image, my videos, all that stuff to sell their diet pills. Not to mention that, that was all happening again while I'm off of social media and I will be going after those people because Keto Rewind is trademarked. But anyways, that's a whole topic for another day, but I have lawyers and that's gonna be shut down real quick. So please don't buy anything that has a diet pill or, no, I don't endorse that, I never will. And that's the whole point of this channel. This channel is about the blood, sweat, and tears, the hard work, the dedication, the picking yourself up when you're falling down. That's what this channel is about. I would never endorse any of those people that stole my images and use them to sell their products, especially the diet pills. That, it, just, it boiled my blood, seeing that over and over again. So, but anyways, getting back onto topic, sorry, that, that, <laughs> that made me raging mad. So, but I will handle that. That's gonna get shut down quick. Um, so anyways, I, the whole point of this channel was to show you what you're gonna expect. And somebody, as somebody who was morbidly obese, 309 pounds, I can honestly say I will never be cured of obesity. I may physically not be overweight, not be obese, might be healthy, might be normal, physically. But emotionally, I will never be cured. Obesity is something I will probably always live with, always fight against and always have to deal with. It doesn't just go away because for whatever reason, like I said, I'm not a doctor, for whatever reason, that mental part stays there. It's like it's ingrained in you and the foods become triggers and it just becomes a slippery slope. And when you go off keto longer and longer and longer, it just gets harder and you just, it just gets harder to come back from it. So that's why I'm showing you this side of the weight loss story. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be pretty, but it's possible. You can come back from it and I want to show you that. So that's basically the theme for today's video. Now, one thing I thought, I was talking with Kyle and I was like, you know what? I stopped exercising. Yes, I was lifting heavy things for like the past three weeks. You know, all the tile was so heavy. My back hurt, all the wood, all the plywood, all the stuff you need to swap out a floor. That was backbreaking work. 
But I'm like, oh yeah, well that I got my exercise so I can go, you know, have french fries. I can go have the bun when I have a burger. That kind of thing, that mentality. But that didn't fix the problem. The problem was I wasn't doing my routine. I wasn't exercising. I need, I found that I just need to get that exercise in every day. And that's so weird to say because when I started this journey, the last thing I thought I would ever need going forward, I thought the food would be like the main part. The exercise to clear my head, that routine, that is so amazingly important to me personally. It's what I do to channel the head emotions. Um, so I took that away and just did all this heavy lifting thinking that was enough. Well, it's a completely different type of release for me. I don't find joy in lifting tile. Uh, um, with shoveling tile, I don't find joy in that. That doesn't clear my head. I do find joy in fresh air, out walking, out jogging, you know, outside, feeling, you know, listening to music, that kind of thing. So that was taken away. So I feel like when I used to, you know, my normal routine, I'd go for my walk, I'd come home, and I'd make better choices the rest of the day. But when I was, I took that part out, well, now it's kind of like, woo, what can I have, you know? And one thing, one bad choice leads to two, and it's like, well, I'm lifting all this heavy tile, we can have ice cream today, and it's, it doesn't work that way. It's all in your head. So for me, that's speaking on my own experience. So I took my walk and exercise out, and that was something that I needed, and I couldn't, I should not have taken that out. I did not make myself a priority. I'm not gonna sweat it, because it was only three weeks, and I had to get this project done, but it does explain the problem, how it went so crazy, how it went so wrong, how I failed. Um, so what am I gonna do? The first thing is, just like I've said this in a bunch of other videos in the past, you have a windshield in your car that's enormous in scale to the rear view mirror because what's in front of you is way more important than what's behind you. That happened, it was three weeks of a hot mess. I lived it up, I learned a lot, and now I'm back to business. So the first thing I'm gonna do is stop worrying, stop panicking, and have trust and confidence in myself that I'll just get back on the wagon. I will make the effort and I'll show up again. I did not show up, I left and I, I, I took a flight out and I got so far away. I'm showing up now, here I am today, you know? I'm just, instead of doing something extreme, like I was, I was considering a beef and butter fast, an egg fast, carnivore, um, fasting, like an extended fast, something like, you know, like 72 hours. I, I, ex I considered all those things, but at the end of the day, Thanksgiving is like in one or two weeks. I don't know. The calendar is getting away from me. So anyways, like Thanksgiving is coming up and then it's like the holidays and it's like, I don't want to do something really extreme. And I thought, you know what? We're just going to go back to keto. Keep it simple, silly. You know, that KISS acronym. So I am just going to resume eating keto. That's it. That's as, that's as simple as that sounds. I'm going to do my fasting because I was having three meals a day plus snacking all day. And that's two things I have never done. And I felt like I was never hungry. <laughs> I, and I'm not even hungry now and I haven't had anything yet today. So it's interesting, um, but I find I thrive on two meals a day and no snacks. I find that works for me and exercise. That is my way I clear my head. That's what makes me make the good decision after one after the other and that's the, the that just makes me feel good for the rest of the day and that keeps everything in check so, so I get to go back to my routine and I also wanted to say this I stepped on the scale today but I told Kyle I can't look at it you have to look at it and tell me so I have not weighed in because I don't want to add that to what, I don't want to own that yet. <laughs> I want to get things moving along again and I'll probably hear about that next week. So I told Kyle to look at the weight for me. I will take my pictures um, and I will insert them right here. You can see the enormous amount of bloat. My stomach looks like a completely different person you know, versus three weeks ago. Like how it go, that's to show you right there how much bloat you carry eating the standard American diet. Now, also, so I don't want to know what I weigh right now, but I did ask Kyle, is it more than 10? And he said, yes. So I have gained more than 10 pounds in three weeks. So 
but I'm not ready to face that number yet. <laughs> so I'm going to build my momentum, my confidence, and then I'll look at that number after some progress has been made. <laughs> So that's my strategy. If you want to rip the band-aid off, something like that, when you want to come back from a cheat meal or you want to come back or you get back on the keto wagon, go for it. But for me, I can't do that. I am not in the place right now mentally where I can accept that number. So we're just going to move on and not panic and not worry and just get back to keto, get back to basics. And then finally, the last thing I want to share is, you know that you're eating the, the way that makes sense after you have been eating some way for some time, so say for example the ketogenic diet, and then you go off of that diet for a this period of time, it gives you a good uh, reinforcement of if you're on the right, the right path or not. So what I mean by that is I've been keto for 88 weeks. I went three weeks off and ate the standard American diet. The one thing that is clear to me, should be obvious, but I'm more positive than ever this is the case. I, the ketogenic lifestyle is the lifestyle for me. I cannot eat the standard American diet. I don't have the control. I don't, ha I don't have the self-control. I don't have the... I don't have the stamina, the mental clarity, the, all the reasons that I do a ketogenic lifestyle like with the food being the bottom part. I'm saying like the other physical aspects, the mental aspects of why I choose to live a ketogenic lifestyle while I make the sacrifices, that kind of thing, is was reinforced over the past three weeks. I didn't like eating this way. It wasn't satisfying. You know, you keep, I keep like trying something over and over again, like, oh, you know, we had whatever for dinner. Let's go out to ice cream. You know, we had this for dinner. Let's have some cookies, you know, like all this stuff. Thinking you're going to get satisfied, you're going to feel that endorphin rush, never felt that way. If anything, it felt like there was no flavor in the standard American diet. It was just sweet and it was just bland and processed. It's like, and so if you've been eating a ketogenic lifestyle for some time, for me, 88 weeks <laughs> um, with a few cheats here and there, but overall 88 weeks of solid keto food where you taste bold flavors delicious, satisfying meals. It's like, it was just reinforced over the past three weeks. I didn't enjoy it and it's, it sucks because I got the weight gain from it without the satisfaction. So if you know what I'm trying to say here, it's like, mm, not cool. So it wasn't worth it. Another thing, you know, it was just, it happened and it was easier to not deal with the ketogenic and all this other stuff. It was just easy to focus on the flooring DIY project in our house. So, and I don't regret it now, but because it was just easier and it got it done and whatever. I needed those floors done. I can't live in a house and it's in mid-construction mentally. That just sets me off in its own way. So um, the main thing is I, it reinforced to me that the ketogenic lifestyle is a lifestyle for me. I'm satisfied. The inflammation in my hands, when I wake up in the morning, they're like stiff and like swollen and like, and them not to mention, I, I was dragging tired for like the past three weeks. I normally am like the energizer bunny. So endless amounts of energy. So that's just, it was reassuring to see that I've made the right choice. The ketogenic lifestyle is my lifestyle going forward, you know, and yeah, there'll always be times where I have to go moth for various reasons or whatever. But overall, I know I made the right choice by switching to the ketogenic lifestyle because I enjoy it. I love the way I feel. I do it for the way I feel, not necessarily for the food, you know, because the way I feel lasts all day. Actually eating the food, you know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe an hour if you want to get fancy. But overall, like that eating part is so small, but you feel that way all day. And I want to feel good all day. So at the end of the day, here's a shirt, a new shirt that I came up with. Keep rewinding. <laughs> I'm a, I don't have, it's like kind of like a real, um, it's a flowy shirt. So it's, it's kind of, it has like a ribbed sleeve. The sleeves are different than the rest of it. It's hard to show on black, but keep rewinding. It's never, it's not over yet. You know, it's, it's not over. <laughs> so link below if you want to order the shirt. Keep rewinding. 
that's the story, that's the motto, you just keep rewinding. What happens is in the past, it, it basically happened, you can't do anything about it, you might as well move forward. And that means keep rewinding. So anyways, I'm gonna go walk, I'm gonna go clear my head, and that's the steps I'm gonna take to hop back on the keto wagon. Lunch is gonna be a basic eggs and maybe some sausage or bacon. Dinner is going to be maybe butter chicken. So that's, and I'm going to film my restart and all that, because I'm way behind on videos, so my actual plan and what I'm gonna eat and what my routine is, I will try to start doing some daily videos. So I hope you missed me, I missed you. <laughs> that was one other thing that I wanted to say. I missed making videos and talking about this stuff. I feel like that has been my creative outlet and it's rewarding work to help so many people. So I missed you. <laughs> Honestly, I did. So, and we are so close to 100,000 subscribers. Please, 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 if you aren't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more like this. I'm Jess. You're watching Keto Rewind. Bye-bye. <laughs>